Hello, 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 and welcome to another live stream. Time uh, got the better of me there, but uh, here we are. Ready to go again for another weekly live stream. Let me know if you can see me and uh, hear me just fine. Some of you I know probably checking out Arn and Joseph chit chatting to each other over on um, Arn's channel. It was fun to see the two of them together, and uh, I didn't believe it fully at first, but there they were together in the same room, quite uh, strangely indeed, but that's cool. It uh, would have been nice to do some more of that kind of stuff in the future, and I'm sure we will. Hopefully I can visit a few of their uh, studios at times, or um, or they can come over here and visit me someday as well. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, we have a pretty you know casual live stream set up for today. I don't have anything huge planned, but uh, I have some bits and pieces to show. I was thinking of maybe... So this week I've been mostly working on the official rewrite of the companion module for um, H2R Graphics version two. That's been a bit of a bit of an effort this week. So I was thinking about uh, tucking into that a little bit, showing you where that's at right now, and uh, maybe getting some thoughts and feedback along the way. So that's one of my main um, thoughts of the stream today. I had a few other notes somewhere that I wrote down. Um, that I can get to and I'll, I'll I'll find those later and dig through them for sure but if you're tuning in and you can hear and see me then just let me know where you're tuning in from I see some people already popping in here IT never gets old good to see you back again saying greetings all from Shoreville um, in the USA nice to have you here um, and also a question immediately after where are you getting those awesome tunes what are they and where did you get to them so a while back I realized that I needed some songs um, to use all the time. Excuse me for these uh, live streams. So uh, the site that I use these days, Artlist.io, was the one I sort of settled for. I can put a link in the chat, but I know many folks have heard of Artlist before. Um, but it it was uh, for various reasons it was the one I chose. I quite like it. It's got all sorts of songs on there that uh, you can use and. The licensing is pretty good as well. I don't remember the specifics right now. I've forgotten them, but um, that's the reason I went for that one. Um, I think I had a code as well that you could use somewhere, but I, I totally forgot where I put that, so it doesn't matter. Just visit the site and find some songs, and I'm sure you'll find some good ones. Uh, Randy here. Good to have you here, Randy, as well. Um, saying, listen to Arn and Joseph will have to drop off when you start. Oh, exactly. You sent that before I kick things off. I was enjoying that show myself, just listening to what they're up to and um, some of their plans for next year as well. And Gert, not easy to follow Arn and H2R at the same time. Yes, that's uh, back to back today on Monday. Arn's doing a streaming week, so it's good to see him go live every single day. And we're live at the same time, I guess. No problem. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I think their vo volume is a bit quieter than mine is, so you have to do some adjustments when you come over to this um, this stream. Uh, Randy, question, which M1 Mac are you running? I had an issue with running the new version of M1 Max 24 GPU. I have the um, M1 Pro, M1 MacBook Pro, no, M1 Pro on a MacBook Pro. It's all very confusing now, all these terms. Um, it's the, so I didn't quite go for the Max, but I went for the top M1 Pro. Um, had an issue with running the new version. I guess you're talking about the new version of H2R Graphics. Um, if not, let me know, but I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. Um, give me give me some more details, either on a direct message or after this live stream about what kind of issues you had, but I'd be happy to give you a hand and we can figure them out. I haven't actually built an M1 version of the app just yet. The Intel version runs just fine on both, so it's still a work in progress. Um, Go Web Technologies wants to know, it's been a while since you shown your setup. Any updates or changes? Yes. Um, I think I'm slowly starting to, instead of adding more equipment over time, I'm actually starting to pull back on pieces of equipment and put in other small pieces. So lighting-wise, I've actually made one of the changes. I now have a light over, instead of using a video light, I actually have just a standard um, light over my head here. I can't actually, do I have a camera that I can show you? No, I guess I don't. Uh, I don't have anything wired up. 
but I'm using like um, I suppose I could show it on my screen here I went for like an IKEA style panel light because um, I wanted one in the house for just general use I'm trying to see what they actually call them is this the ones um, yeah the Fluolt light so one of these lights here is what I'm using um, and it's just mounted above my head off to the side it's the smallest one of them all and what that's doing is giving me some light here now it may not be the, the best light the most perfect light for this use case but what it does mean is I don't have to set up a light what I was finding was since this desk is my everyday desk as well I didn't want to have a big video light set up as well so I'm kind of multi-purpose in that one and the other big change you can see here what I'm talking into now um, instead of using the road NTG video mic, USB mic, that I've been using for months now on the stream. Just the other day, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, I ordered this, but it took a while to come, which is the Shure SM7B, and that's going into a Scarlett, uh, the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. So that's the main, I would say, that's probably one of the bigger changes that I've made. Um, this purchase was for many reasons. Um, coming into the new year, more, more audio-based content I kind of want to push towards, or maybe not necessarily just audio content, but focus on audio and then let the video be a backup for that. So some things I'm thinking about, and I think we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll come to that a little bit in my kicking off the new year live stream. So my plan for the next few weeks is this is the last, I think this will be the last main live stream for the year since next Monday, sort of like a holiday period. I think I might skip that. Um, Aaron just mentioned maybe we'll do a stream on our joint birthday which is next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday I think I'm not entirely sure which day it is um, maybe I should know that next Tuesday um, but at least this will be the last sort of main live stream for the year and then the following week is the first week of January and I'll do my first live stream of the year maybe we'll talk about some things coming up in terms of development and videos We'll talk about my plans for all that kind of stuff. So I haven't really set anything in stone just yet, but I'll I'll get there. Um, so those are the main changes I've made to the studio. Thanks for the question there. Go Web Technologies. Um, you can play uh you can play the songs like forever if you have downloaded the ones. Yeah, exactly something like that. So for Artless, what I was just talking about a minute ago there, you can play the songs. If you download them once, you can sort of keep them forever. I think that was the whole idea. Um, so that's excellent feature of the artlist IO. Thank you so much for the super chat just coming in here. Marlon, again, you're back again this week. Um, hello, John, thank you again. Everything is working on my setup except for the fact that every time I quit and open again, my ATEM EPI address is changing and I have to manually, I have to update on companion. Any suggestions? Yes, um, you'll have to remind me what ATEM you have, but I think it was the extreme. And in that case, you can set, in fact, for all the ATEMs, um, you can set a manual IP address for those, but I'm happy to chat with you specifically after this and we can we can talk through it, especially for quite a generous super chat. Um, send me a message after this uh, email or, or Discord. Um, but you can set a manual IP address and that way your uh, your router or your router will not give you an IP address for that ATEM every time you set it up. So we can definitely fix that for sure. Jeremy, my any solutions for powering your live stream setup on location when means Power, mains power, sorry, isn't available. That is something I really wanted to cover um, in a video. One of the reasons I actually thought about that today, doing like an all battery live stream. One of the reasons I didn't do that is because I wouldn't have some lighting. So I might wait till it's a little bit brighter outside, a little bit different time of day, maybe. Because I wanted to do an all battery live stream. Um, I have two main problems, actually. One of them is that I don't remember where all the batteries are for this camera or the charger. That's one problem. And the other problem is lighting. Everything else I think I can fix just fine. Um, but what I do have myself, now this might not be perfect for um, for your setup, is uh, I have one of these, what is it called? Um, yes, I will just pick this random one here and we can explore it a little bit. But it's um, it's called Gold Zero, which is a, um, a battery pack that I have for a previous... Um, like a camper van style setup that we had. So it's just like a a normal battery. It has um, a power connector, some USBs and stuff like that. So what I wanted to do with that was do a test stream to see how far I could push it with only batteries. 
Um, so maybe stay tuned for a good answer on that. I would like to test some stuff out. There are some devices, obviously, you can use only battery, where things like the um, the Yolo Box and the Yolo Box Pro have a battery built in, so that gets you pretty far. But of course, you'll need some sort of battery system to to back that up. So I'll, I'll probably explore some options on that in the new year for sure. Um, running the H2R graphics on M1, no problem. It's good to hear. Maybe there's some specific issues along the way, so I'll be keen to hear more about that for sure. Uh, Jason here with, we use the chat graphic to overlay on our YouTube stream. Does the, up, does the new update offer Facebook chat? Is it planned for a future update? It's still something that I'm definitely considering. I've talked about that for a long time um, and I've really wanted to add like other versions of chat into the into the chat option, but the new version doesn't specifically have Facebook. It only has YouTube right now, um, just like the old version. So it's still something I'm, I'm looking into. The trouble with adding all these different ones is they all kind of play differently. So it is quite a bit of work just to navigate each one's API and figure it all out. So it's just a time uh, time issue at this very moment. Chris, nice to have you over here from Arn's stream. Nice to see Aaron got everyone nice and warmed up, I think. And the FU Money podcast, nice to have you here. Uh, Hugo, thanks for joining. If you want help to reproduce the exact same conditions of the ticker grab text bug, I can send you the details of the elements in text. Yeah, exactly, do that. Um, Hugo sent me some details this week about some ticker issues. So yeah, for sure, send me the exact details and I can certainly recreate that. Um, and another camera channel. I saw you in there in our Arn stream and now you're over here to bully me with some questions. I will accept the bullying of questions for sure. Um, and very smart idea here from Christian. You came a bit late, so you're starting the stream at 2x speed. That's a very good idea. I like that uh, option. So I think what we'll do now, it's already 12 minutes. I could just keep going here, but um, I will... Uh, I will come back to any questions that, that, that come this way and um, feel free to drop them in the chat for sure. What we'll jump into now, and let me just hide that chat message there, is my work in progress. So this is not official yet. It's not even in beta just yet. It's just something I've been working on basically most of this week. It took me to build up the rewrite of the companion module for graphics version two. So if we took a look over on my, um, actually, let me just change this screen here to that one. Excellent. So if I take a look over on my um, screen, slow stinger, what I've been doing, and I'll just give you on a little tour, and then you can let me know if there's any features you think are really missing, or anything that I uh, jumped over and I should really add to the companion module. So one of the things I always wanted to add in the previous version was this presets, and that's something that I've added in this uh, version here. So if I jump into presets, I have a couple of options like um, some basic actions, things like run the graphics or hide all graphics. Um, and from there, I can um, just drag and drop those in just like you can with any other companion style uh, presets. Now what I realized is this is not plugged up into the live stream that I'm using right now. So let me just do that because I think I can show you how that's done. If I go back over to connections and edit this connection I've done here, um, what you'll have is an IP address, a port number, and then a project ID. So for my use case, and I imagine much of this will not change very often for your setup, but for my use case, I'm using Oh, let's see, 152, I'll just change this. As the IP and the port number is pretty much always gonna be 4001. And then the project ID is GRBO. GRBO, and then I can just save that. Um, now, if this falls apart, I'm just giving you some warning now. If any any part of this falls apart, it's because it, I've been building it this week and uh, it's not necessarily ready for prime time yet, so. I'll just give myself that little um, that little uh, caution there. So what I have now is these uh, settings all uh, all set up and ready to go. In fact, if I take a look, I'm hoping that this works just fine. 
Yeah, great. So if I look at my um, actual rundown for this event that I have here today, and cut to that, you can see this is my uh, graphics project for the current live stream. So I have a few bits and pieces like images, lower thirds, um, the timer I showed at the start, the social message, and then just some other score and stuff. But if I show you back over on the um, the companion uh, profile here, you can actually see those same graphics are all here. So the image, the lower third message, the timer I had, social, and some other bits and pieces. And in fact, if I just now this is not you know anything huge if you've used companion before, but if you've used my old module and now you're changing to this new module, then you'll be pretty happy to see that you can just pull in those graphics as they come here. Um, and if I just head over to this, what you can see is that it's actually a variable being pulled in from H2R graphics. So that image, um, this image here is called here record. In fact, let me just get a better one. I'll go into presets again and grab this lower third here. That'll be a, probably a little bit better. So what you can see is it's called first line, which is actually the text that is shown in H2R graphics over here. So if I just change this text here to uh, John Barker and show you back the um, companion, you can see that it's now changed to John Barker. In fact, just off screen here, I'll just update this again to uh, Sean uh, Baker and you can see there over in Companion that it's being updated as well now to Sean Baker my alternative name so that is a look at how the two things are linked together now just I'll just stay in Companion a little bit more and just browse through it a little bit more um, so up, since I pulled in these presets that I created already what happens is whenever I click on one, so I'll just do a test action here, what you'll see is that the on-air status of this graphic is linked to whether or not it's actually on-air. So if I just click on-air here, you can see there that um, you can see the graphic in the foreground since I'm using the graphics for this production today. Um, if I was to just really zoom in on this and then run this graphic you'll see that the background goes like a darker red as it goes off air and then it goes black when it's fully off air same for going on air if I click on it goes dark red then fully red when it's on air so you get that nice feedback and this is all just stacked up feedback um, I don't know what to call them feedbacks on the um, on companion so following many of the same principles that you can do and uh, since that is a lower third, what you could also do is lots of other actions. In fact, I'll just make another button. Um, and in this case, I'll say I want to change the name of the lower third. Let's just write in LT name. Oh, I can't spell from this distance. LT name. And um, I've created obviously a bunch of actions for hitch to our graphics as you would expect. So things like run, hide all, um, if you want to show and hide a graphic which is the ones we just looked at there. And moving on further down, um, I can update the content of any specific graphic. So each one of these is different because each graphic is sort of a little bit different. But for example, if I want to update the content of the lower third, the one you can see on screen right now, I will pick that lower third. So I want to update this graphic. And line one, I want to say, um, well, good old John. And then line two, I can just say Barker. And whenever I run this graphic, you should see on the screen that it changes to John Barker, which worked as I expected it to. Um, so that's a look at that. But the thing that I really like is um, that you can now finally use what I would much rather use, which are the variables. So I have some variable text fields here. So text one, text two, and text three. So if I just copy that into my graphic, so I want text one to be there and text two to be here. So now these are variable text, um, using variable text in order to update the content of those 
graphics. And you can see on screen right now that actually I haven't defined that on this particular computer. I've been messing around with it today. So it's the graphic at the bottom has gone a bit funny. But that's okay. We can fix that in a second. Going back to companion here, what I can do is um, I will just delete this action that I created and then I will type in a new action. So I want to set a text variable, in this case text1, and I want to set that to John. And then I might also want to um, update another text variable. So I can type in h2r again, set text variable, and I'll set text2 to here to record. So now this button has um, will set two text variables. And if I test that action, you can see that my lower third on the bottom updates. And in fact, what I could do if I wanted to is um, run a show hide graphic action after after I do all this. So I want to show that graphic. So if I take that lower third off air and then I can imagine myself stacking up a bunch of these buttons like this so this this graphics actually now for Sean at here to record and whenever I test this action in the background it will change the name to um, Sean at here to record and then it will bring that graphic online oh I just realized I didn't um, I didn't do the right graphic <laughs> let me just take that off again so I need to be able to show the right graphic and I chose the wrong one but it's it's um it's this one so now let's test it again and see if I didn't mess it up this time there we go so now it's Sean at here to record and all that data is being pulled in from my graphics session and then I'm able to use it as I wish during the um, production works out really nice and it's um, a much better process than the um, than the previous way of doing these kind of graphics, I think. So that's a little sneak peek. There's a lot more involved in that for sure. Um, lots of things like list variables are added in there as well. And you can also set the, um, in fact, I can just scroll along the actions a little bit more here. If I just type in H2R again. Some of the ones that I just breezed over there, things like you can set the URL for a web page, you can update scores so certain scores could be updated at certain times and then you could set the position you could set the x and y offset of a graphic or you could set x and y together if you want to go to a jump jump to a specific place instantaneously scale and you can also set a custom theme append a theme to a graphic while you're live so if you want to make a change with the press of a button then it would work just fine and um, you can go from there and do your thing Oh well, wow. that was lots of details on this. I'm happy to talk about it some more, but I saw lots of questions and things scroll by there. So apologies if I miss anything along the way. Um, but a few more people a bit late because of our own stream. Not a problem. Nice to have you here either way. Um, and I saw Marlon. Thanks again. Another very generous. Uh, Merry Christmas and thanks you again for everything. I'll email you. Please do. I think I saw your email just come in there. So good to good to have your email pop in. Um, Chris says, will H2R Gear add a print function? So I just added a new feature for H2R Gear, which I can happily explore right now um, in the last few weeks. But this, you might, if you haven't been in there in a while, you might have missed it. Um, so it's not quite a print function but it is a way of exporting so that you can print yourself um, so if I take that down let me see if I can find myself a little plan here and um, yes this key fill plan here will do just fine so now in if you're a paid um, on a paid subscription and h to our gear you have this new export option which lets you export your gear plan and these are quality settings here so you can do one times quality which is basically what you see on the screen behind there or 10 times quality which is about 10 times the size of what you see behind you I can do five by right now and then you can set a transparent background so we're actually downloading a PNG here 
and if I open up this PNG, you'll see there that the, it actually has that transparent background and you can scroll right into it and get all the details that you need from the plan as well. So I could easily print this now or drag it into you know Word or some sort of presentation tool and go from there. So that's a look at how you can print a gear plan and that'll work much better than um, you know, trying to print from the browser or something like that. I'm running out of water fast, but luckily I brought over a bottle of it. So I'm just gonna fill up my water bottle in the background while I read out some questions. Um, Chris wants to know any plans to support Twitch, bits, chat, etc. on H2R graphics. I would like to add support for that, but I think it's just outside of my knowledge at this point. Um, trying not to spill my water here as I fill up my water bottle. Um, because I don't really stream on Twitch or use it for that purpose, um, I really don't want to launch with a new feature that I don't fully understand or use myself. So I need to kind of get into that world a little bit before I can add that fully. But Twitch is one of those things on the list that's really well documented um, and I'd really like to add that for sure. I'm just going to list some more questions here that I'll come back to a little bit later for sure. Go up to can we have a short demo of using H2R V2 with Companion? Just did. You got that demo. Everything worked pretty well um, as I expected it to. MT got my H2R Graphics Pro license a few days ago. Even I use it so much that I want to support your great work. That's Great to hear. Thank you so much for, for um, getting your pro uh, license. Oh, I see you, you changed your comment in a second. But yeah, I appreciate that a lot. That's very, very kind of you. IT never gets old. Any chance in the near future that you will allow the changing of a project ID in the URL so I can be more, so it can be more meaningful? Oh, okay, so you'd want the ID to be something you could remember. Um, Maybe. I'll put that on the maybe list. I think I have a lot more big features to add um, but that could be a good feature for a future iteration for sure so I'll, I'll think about that I'll think about that uh, I, I didn't think you'd put you'd change the ID very often so that's why I kept it uh, as a sort of collection of numbers and characters or sorry just just letters um, but I also kept it short so that you if you were changing it you could you know call it out to somebody and, and they could write it down as fast as you said it so but interesting, interesting to know what you're up to. Eric says, whoa, Companion Live updating the title. It's really shaping up. Yes, it's it's getting there for sure. Um, it's really nice to see all of that data being pulled back from the app and then populating things within Companion. So for example, I don't know if I fully showed um, if I just cut back over to this real quickly. And I go into my variable section here. I now have this H2R graphics section of variables so if I head in there what you can see in here if you're familiar with this in companion this will look pretty normal to you as well but um, what you can see in here is all of the graphics that are currently on my um, list here and then the content of some of them some of them is not fully fleshed out yet but so this message body and um, this is the current value for that and if I just um, update that off screen here. Let me find that message. Um, this is a message, and it's um, changing the uh, the value right within Companion at the same time. So that's really nice to have. I've been having some fun with that this week to see how the, that stuff works and to pull that data back again because it's pretty important to have. Once you start going down that direction, it's really nice to add loads of stuff like that. Um, where was I? Nice button state too. Thanks. Catched up. Yeah. Um, Ryan here saying I think that companion is just live updating the button title as pre record updates that run down. Exactly. So the um, companion instance is just pulling data or listening for data from H2R graphics and all that stuff is just being pulled in there. So as you saw in that little short demo, as I change out on uh, graphics, then it's being updated in Companion, but also as I send data from Companion, it's going into graphics. It's sort of working both ways in a sense. Um, bigger buttons definitely are needed. Yeah, it's quite nice when you can just scroll into the screen and get really big buttons. 
Um, good question here from Alan. Um, is it possible to use HTML graphic as multi languages, right to left as Hebrew? It's not currently. I haven't got um, right to left in there just yet, but it is on my list of things to take a look into. I may need some help along the way whenever that time comes. So I'm sure I'll let people know here on the stream or on Discord and and in places like that. Something I'm not terribly knowledgeable um, in, so I would like some help along the way whenever that time comes. But it's on my list of things to get done. Chris, can't wait for this version to go live. Me too. Looking forward to it. I need to send it to some people to, to test. So as usual, if you want to join the Discord server, there's a link below. And whenever I have a beta version of the module to test, I will ask some people to test that out. So I want as many people to try it as they can and find some issues with it before it becomes like officially supported. So Discord will be the place to get some updates on that whenever I have them. I'm not sure when that will happen just yet, but hopefully soon. Um, let me see. Christian saying, not sure you mentioned already, when will the companion integration be out? Yeah, probably within, actually I can't say because I'm not entirely sure. Um, it just depends what kind of issues might pop up if I share it with some people and it, and it breaks for them. Also with holidays in the way, now, I guess a lot of people, it can go either way. A lot of people have time to mess around and tinker or a lot of people don't have any time at all. So I'm kind of at the, at the whim of people having time to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> I think I could take a couple more questions before I head into the post show for the day. But plenty of questions coming in here, which is great. And Marlon, thank you so much for becoming a uh, member on the channel. I appreciate that a lot. It's great to see you here. Mark wants to know, John, can I change the lower third banner via CSS? Uh, not currently. There's no CSS. Um, technically, it's all CSS. So anything you change in the theme is technically changing it via CSS. But there's no custom type in CSS just yet. Something I'm still thinking about how to implement properly in this V2. So not yet. Let me see. More questions. Here to record from Chris saying, here to record, yes, my church is going to rebuild the media booth. Very cool. And this would be extremely helpful in planning the new setup. Okay, cool. Yes, that was for the export of H2R gear plans. Yes, give that a go and let me know how it goes for you. Uh, I did notice there's a few things in there I need to tweak, like you can't see the little arrows anymore, but um, I think it'll get you pretty far if you want to export the plan. Awesome feature. Thanks, John. Very useful. Thank you. Yes, and, le and left to entry follow-up from uh, Alan here saying, of course, text entry from right to left as well. So it's not just the graphics that need to go right to left. It's entry text as well. So that's the kind of stuff I want to get right for sure power jams djs this is an interesting question so it's been one week since i properly launched h2r graphics into the wild into the world to anyone can download it now over on h2r.graphics there's a link below this video um and i think my number one um feature request or question since then was in version one you can set a duration for the lower thirds and you set it to like, let's say five seconds, and then you show your lower third, and then five seconds later, the lower third disappears. And Power Jams DJ here is coming in with, can we make the lower third automatically disappear? It's definitely been on my list of things to add for sure. But what I wanted to do was not just let the lower third be something you can do that with, but any graphic could have a timer built into it that would disappear after a certain amount of time. So it's been a little bit more of a consideration of the best way to do it and how I want to do it in the future. So I kind of held back on it for a little bit longer, but I'm getting there for sure. I will eventually get there with that. But for now, you can still use something like Companion and then set a timer to show and then hide the graphic as well. So that is still possible. But, and you can see here myself, I want to add it for chat messages because I would like those to disappear after 15, 20 seconds. And I keep forgetting. So it's definitely something I want to to add in there for sure. All right, what time is it now? 7.35 almost. I just wanna take this chance to thank the supporters of the channel from anywhere that you support, whether that's buying the pro license, buying the packs on different places, becoming a Patreon 
patron um, or a YouTube member. And um, I usually like to call out a few specific supreme supporters of the channel, Tech Condo Patrick and Cloud Bedrock as well, who have been supreme supporters of the channel for the longest time. And I saw Marlon also just came in there and became a supreme supporter during this live stream. So big thanks to everyone who is a member of the channel. And um, obviously anyone who just watches the channel too, I appreciate all of those things from tiny views, one or two views to many views over time to subscribing for a long time and then to becoming a member for a long time. It's all great. It helps me grow the channel. And that's definitely something for next year that I really want to focus focus on is growing the channel, making more content videos and all that stuff. So it's a big part of my plan for then. Um, I'm not going to go anywhere, but if you are watching live, just stick around, hang around on the link. I'm just going to take a little refreshment break and then grab some water, fill up my water bottle maybe, and then I'll answer lots more questions in the post show. Like I said, if you're watching live the post show, you can just stay here and don't go anywhere. But if you're watching on demand, there is a link to the members only post show below this video. So stay tuned. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to get some water and I'll see you in a second. 